Welcome in. It's the Positively Petland Show, AM 800 KXIC. I'm Jay Capron. Ron Salzer here with Petland of Iowa City. And if you're listening in, in the 9 o'clock hour on Sunday, hopefully you're having a wonderful weekend, enjoying it, having a nice, calm Sunday. Maybe you're heading to church, you're heading off to the store, whatever you're up to. Thanks for tuning in. And Ron's here with Petland of Iowa City. How are things, Ron? Life is beautiful. Yes, things are moving along well at the store over the summer. You guys are staying busy, aren't you? Yeah, we're seeing that. Uh, if you haven't been over to Lucky's, I you're in my court as well. Um, my wife you and still my, have it. I still I walk across the parking. I know. <laughs> maybe here, maybe today I'll do that. Um, but my wife has been over there. Uh, my daughter's been over there. Most of my store has been over there. I think I'm probably the last one. They all come back and say. Wow, yeah. that was an incredible. Uh, I heard the sandwiches were uh, good there. The wine tasting is really good. I bet. <laughs> That's kind of funny. I'm trying to get used to that. Walking around the store with a little glass of wine or, or doing that, but that just sounds kind of interesting. Yeah. So it's better than I expected. I mean, I, I expected something nice, but it's nice. It's it is, and I'm, I don't know if it's just because it's new, but it seems like they're doing all the right things. So, um, some you mentioned earlier in the week uh, during your show was the different flavored chips. Yeah, yeah. Um, they have. I'm a big chip fan. I love the kettle cooked kind oh, of yeah, chip. Yeah, me too. Um, and then I find different flavors. There's a Hawaiian onion flavored kettle chip holy cow this stuff is like beyond addictive it's it's like more addictive than a dorito really um but i'm told they have all sorts of different flavored chips over there oh. so that's probably going to be the aisle that i go to immediately and go, go pick out a couple of try to find your coffee blend i'll bring one oh, in for you that sounds does that sound bad <laughs> it does i mean but if i find it i'm buying it for oh, you oh yuck i will throw the bag out <laughs> i'll go <laughs> donate it or something i don't know that just sounds cap it was cappuccino i think was the one I oh saw. then it's gonna be a little sweet thing i don't know biscuits and gravy sounds interesting that was Ooh. one of the ones i talked about i love biscuits and gravy oh yeah i, I just meat don't and potatoes know. and yeah. So <laughs> anyway, we're on potato chips. Do you have dog chips? Is there such a thing as dog yeah, chips? Yeah, you, you, <laughs> you know, know what? what I, yeah, um, it's really cool. They have it's made out of the sweet potatoes, and so they have sweet potato chips. No kidding. Oh, and oh, for dogs, they go like extra special. We have sweet potato chips coated in what's called a bully stick. So it's a oh a coating that has you know meat and and that kind of flavor mm. or oh, not flavor the real deal coated around the uh the sweet potato chip whoa i'm like going gosh if i was a dog that'd be like yeah i would think the dogs love that I stuff, turn huh? the tv on put the bag in front of me and let's have some fun nice you know? nice i did i was being sarcastic too i didn't think there was a chip for no, the dog they, so apparently there is yeah and that would be healthy for them but they also we have other uh chips that are not fried and all that kind of stuff this one's baked so it's not yeah. fried They've um, thought of everything, haven't they? Oh, Ron? yeah. If we've got it for people, I, the, the dogs, you know, and pets, all kinds of pets start getting it for them as well. So it's, yeah. uh, it's interesting. interesting. That's yeah. uh, Ron Salzer with Petland of Iowa City. And it is the Positively Petland Show. Let's set the table for you today, let you know what we're talking about. We have the Italian Greyhound as the breed of the week. We'll tell you about that. Ron's going to take us through barking and talk about it in a, a little bit of a different way today. He's going to take us through um, step by step and talk about some of the things, some of the reasons why the dog may be barking and hopefully help some of you out there that are having some issues with that with your uh, with your dog and you can maybe stop it and uh, learn some tricks and, and then be a little bit happier because your dog's not barking all the time so we'll talk about that we have the amazing pet story of the week it's going to take us back to hurricane katrina i'll tell you about that and then the food we're going to feature is chicken soup for the soul dog food which i never i think we talked about it once briefly when you brought them in but uh I, you're gonna have to ref refresh my. Yeah, we found out about it that day, and I said, "Oh, it's coming on in. It is in now the I, store now right you've now." Got it. So we'll talk about that coming up here as well. That's our pet uh, food for the day. So we have all this to get to here on a very busy day. So thanks for coming along for the Positivity Petland Show with Ron Salisbury from Petland of Iowa City and me, Jay Capron, KXIC Morning Host, bringing you this program. And it's time right now to get you the amazing pet story of the week. Big voice guy. Look at that. He's eating a bully stick. It's time chewing for on a bully stick. <laughs> story of the week. 
It's it's kind of gross. I, 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 gross. I'll admit, I've eat some, eaten some very few kinds of dog food. Uh, more of the biscuits that I was told they tasted. Good, Not so. the beefy stuff? No, no. But a bully stick. That's Come just on. yuck. Spit that out. Thank oh, you, big gosh, boys. His guy. breath has got to be nasty. I, yeah, I hope you don't kiss your wife with that. With that Golly. bully stick. Stick it out of your mouth. mouth. Anyway, that's... He's look, he looks like he's using it as a cigar. <laughs> that's... Gosh, you know, just sometimes he just gets on you. Like <laughs> he's, he does it on purpose. I think so. He's always wearing something different. He's always doing something different. Uh, but he's always got to be in the spotlight. What a ham! Anyway, uh, it is time for the amazing pets of the week, as you just heard Big Voice Guy tell you about. And we're going back to the year that uh, when Hurricane Katrina struck. And this story is about a black lab that saved a drowning man before the rising waters, the flood waters could. Uh, we're going to about to claim his life. That dog, ironically, was later rescued herself by rescue teams and named Katrina and was honored with a standing ovation at an award ceremony and saved a dog, uh, saved a man from drowning. And occasionally you'll hear stories about that dog saving people from drowning. It's always uh, quite amazing to hear about that. So that's our amazing pet story of the week. Katrina, the black lab during Hurricane Katrina that became a hero. That is the Amazing Pet Story of the Week. Coming up here, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to have the meat of the show. That's coming up here. We're going to talk about the barking. We talked to uh, we'll, Ron will dig into that. We'll talk about the Italian Greyhound, and we'll talk about chicken soup for the soul, dog food, and, and what that's all about. It's all coming up here on KXIC. Thanks for tuning in as we go to our first break. Uh, tell us about the store, Ron. We're Petland of Iowa City, located across from the uh, Sycamore Mall. I'm not sure. Are we used to calling that thing Marketplace Mall yet? Not yet, but yeah. it's starting. I, mean, I still call it Sycamore Mall. All right. but, oh, no. Across from Lucky Market, that, that would be, that's probably now becoming part of our vocabulary. Sure, sure. Uh, we are open today from noon until 6, and then all other days we're open from 10 a.m. till 9 p.m. So if you're driving around right now, uh, 10 or <laughs> noon <laughs> now we will be opening up um, some things that people take advantage uh, in our store well today at 10 30 we have free puppy classes before you're open before we're open just knock on the door we'll come over we'll get it uh, open the door for you bring your dog with bring your child with because training is the number one way to get your child engaged with that dog is through training no charge no charge free it is free classes. i don't it does not matter whether you got your dog from us or not we just want to do that as community service for our for our community for iowa city uh and beyond so that's uh, one great thing uh nail trims five dollar nail trims you can't no, beat that can't beat a five dollar nail trim <laughs> um no appointments necessary come on in bring your dog in and we'll take care of that uh, usually uh, immediately there's rarely a, a line that we have on the weekend sometimes we get little lines going but we'll get through them pretty quick and then all of our dog and cat food is buy 10 get one free and we track it for you so you don't have to be cutting things and up and all that kind of a thing here for chicken soup for the soul we already have it on the buy 10 get one free program so when you buy that first bag you'll start seeing the, that, that countdown uh, towards a free uh, chicken soup for the soul uh, so uh, take advantage of that we do not that the manufacturers help us with that so we're not marking up to do that uh, we're have uh, we have very competitive pricing throughout our store um, plus you get these added bonuses because I've wrestled those manufacturers and said I want that I want that you got to support it uh, because I know that's something that you guys value. So. Nice. All right. Well, that is Ron Salzer with Petland of Iowa City. Just heard a little bit about his store. Go check him out right there at the Iowa City Marketplace across from Lucky's, formerly the Sycamore Mall. Back with more after this. Good morning. <laughs> All right. Ready to come back? No. Let me get uh, two things up. Okay. Uh, Interesting. You do a search, and the next time you bring it up, it comes up different. I loved how here. Hmm. 
<laughs> I was going to do, I, it came up on uh, when I did a quick search on your neighbor, neighbor's dog is barking, but it actually gets into the whole how to talk with your neighbor. <laughs> And it's so polite, but it's like so confrontational. That? They got these like nice little cartoons and all this kind of stuff. That's actually funny. We might have to talk about that. All right. And then finally, oops. Come on, give it to me. Chicken soup. For the soul. Oh, it comes up high on the search ranking for chicken soup for the dog uh, for dog food. Oh. Oh, here's a nice. Let's see. I'm ready to go. Okay. Here we go. In three, two, <clears throat> one. Welcome back. It's the Positively Petland Show, AN800 KXIC. I'm Jay Capron, Ron Salzard here with Petland of Iowa City, and we are rolling along with the show. Lots to get to here. We did have the amazing pet story of the week, taking us back to Hurricane Katrina, a black lab named Katrina who saved a man from drowning. And we have the rest of the show to get to, quite a bit to talk about. The Italian Greyhounds, the breed of the week. We'll talk about barking and chicken soup for the soul dog food. So let's start with the breed of the week, the Italian Greyhound. Ron, what can you tell us about the Italian Greyhound? So the Italian Greyhound, how far back do you think we've seen the Ad Italian Greyhound? Or let's just put it as a Greyhound of different sizes. Since 1200 AD. <laughs> I just made that up. <laughs> Is that too far I'm back? like, I'm trying to do math right now. Um, ancient decorative arts of the Mediterranean countries dating back to thousand years so i was trying to like two thousand years ago that's even yeah that's way back that's uh we're in 2000 so right so that would 2012, be 2012 yeah so. that's right around that 15 AD. yeah <laughs> so, so 1200 oh, AD. Just i was only going math. yeah i was only going 800 years ago you're saying it's 2, oh okay i thought you were saying ad no 1200 oh okay yeah, 1200 ad is what i so said. i'm only going that would be th over three thousand years ago no no that's bc Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, I'm see. I'm still confused. Okay, yeah. let's move so, on off anyway, of that topic. To break it down, I was saying 800 years ago. It's actually 2000. 2000 years, years ago. Yeah, we were. They were seeing it in decorative arts. I think you can even see it in the Egyptian statues and things like that. You can see evidence of Italian wow, greyhounds in there. That? So I think that would date it back even further. If you have not been around 
a greyhound, especially a whippet or an Italian greyhound, mm -hmm. uh, you haven't lived life yet. Have you <laughs> experienced one of oh, these yeah, yet? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. I just saw a whippet at the farmer's market uh, the other day, and I went up and talked to the lady about it because I thought I always think they're kind of cool-looking dogs, and I'm always confused if it's a whippet or a greyhound. I always mix them up. Yeah, yeah. so there's different three different sizes, basically, of greyhounds. You have the standard greyhound. That's what we see uh, walking around and uh, at the racetracks. I don't know if they're still even doing that kind of a thing, yeah. but uh, those are, were the standard bigger greyhounds. Then you have the Whippet, which is kind of a medium-sized greyhound. Uh, much more, you know, you see people at, you know, those are as pets for families and stuff. And then the Italian greyhound falls in that same line, but a much smaller uh, uh, greyhound. Let so me So skinny. Skinny, 13 to 15 inches tall at the shoulder uh, for the Italian greyhound. And so Italian greyhounds are just like all about fun and, and being part of you and all that kind of stuff. Uh, they, I always describe their energy level as extremely high for short periods of time. Okay. So that they do not, if you've ever seen the Italian greyhounds, there is not a lot of meat on that, on that no, dog. No, they look very light. So yeah. they'll get running, 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 and then they just, I have no more energy. So it's one of those dogs, if you're looking for that kind of a thing where, yeah, I want, I want some energy, but I don't want it continuous. Okay. Look at the Italian Greyhound. It's a great uh, breed for that. Have you ever seen a fat Greyhound? I have never. I've seen uh, standard Greyhounds that were overweight. Okay. But even a overweight Greyhound is much leaner than I would think it probably a skinny looks more like breed. a normal, like yeah. a regular uh, breed because yeah. it's uh, they are so skinny. They're just slim with those le those legs, and once they get going, though, if you ever seen them run before, uh, it it is quite impressive. You could see why they did become racing dogs is because they are so fast, right? And um, you know, in the uh, the Italian, uh, it's smaller, uh, yes. but it is still probably a quick little dog. I would imagine, right? Oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. Try to catch that one during its hyper little burst. Uh, isn't, that, isn't that funny? Just to sidetrack for a second when a dog knows that you're trying to chase it and catch it and it just <laughs> it, it gets that look in his face it's like, I know you're trying to get me, but you're not going to get me. Oh, Susie the Trouble <laughs> Child has that down pat. She's a well, Maltese poodle. If you haven't heard me talk about her, holy cow, she tries everything. She's a very smart dog. And then you when start she's getting doing frustrated. That, you're like, I really need to get a dog because I got to get somewhere. Susie and I have a <laughs> great relationship. And so when she's doing that, I go, Susie, sit. And, you know, you know the tone and everything. It's not a yell or anything like that. But she knows once I do that, she goes, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you. I thought you were playing. Uh, okay. All right. And she, put, she kind of wiggles and then gets her butt down and goes, okay, Puts I'm her right head here down. for you. Yeah. Oh, she doesn't even put her head down. She, st <laughs> she just looks at you as you're walking up and that's usually when I pick her up and we're like trying to go someplace, you know? Right. Well, it's good. You trained her to stop because you know, I know that a lot of times you can't get them to stop. Right. right? They're just still, they just keep running and running. They think it's hilarious that you can't catch them. <laughs> it's playtime. <laughs> Well, when we talk about barking, this is what we'll get into is, is they think it's something and you're thinking something different. And that's what you got to figure out. Sure. So let's finish up with this Italian Greyhound. Uh, they have short fur and they are a smaller dog. So while they are a shedding dog, you're not going to notice it much around the house unless you have a contrasting color couch or something like that. And then you will see it on there. Um, you can use the Furminator. I've used the Furminator on my little Dachshund, short hair Dachshund. And I was, I got a whole handful of hair out of Callie, which I was kind of shocked that that much would come out. And she still was full of hair, you know, kind of a thing. Um, so you could use that if you did have a shedding issue. But I'm going to say you probably don't because it's a small dog with short hair. And that tends to be the lowest maintenance dog out there. Uh, the only lower than an Italian Greyhound would be, what, a Chihuahua? Uh, maybe mm -hmm. a dachshund. I think they kind of are comparable there. Um, a little, little miniature pincher would probably be a little smaller as well. Um, so the Italian Greyhound, bursts of energy, fun. Uh, so maintenance is kind of low on that. Uh, they're, they would be rate, they're rated as fairly active. And I think that's getting into bursts of energy. And then oh, I'm so tired, <laughs> uh, very easy to groom, um, bathing only when necessary. Um, that would be kind of when they get into stuff or if there's you have you have a sensitive nose uh, weekly bathing should be pretty easy because they are so small you can put them right into the uh, the sink here AKC actually says little to no shedding 
it's a short hair dog so it's definitely shedding but they're just saying you just don't see it all that much is is the basic thing uh they like to exercise they're probably not going to go on those long runs with you but they'll definitely have fun on those shorter runs and uh you can build them up to different lengths over time just like we would build ourselves up to longer distances as well uh great with families uh they actually don't know whether this was bred as a hunting dog or just a companion dog um so you can tell that hey, there's a lot of friendliness in it. Great for friends, great for adults, great for children. Very peaceful. And that is the Greyhound. What color is it? Um, you can get them in all sorts of different colors. Right now we have, it would be more in that blue uh, or gray, light gray colors. Blue? Um, a blue dog? Yeah. It, you know, you're ha- making fun of me now. <laughs> I'm, okay. pi- I'm picturing a blue dog. In the, the breeder <laughs> world. Clifford the Big Red Blue dog. means gray. Just put it at that. Ah. And so it's a light gray dog. That's what I see most of them on. I'm trying to okay. see all classic black and tan. Um, and they're, oh, they are saying any color. And so what I see a lot of them is that blue slash gray color dominates. I, have, I haven't even seen the, the classic black, uh, black and tan. That Do you have any even green in. dogs? Any green dogs? <laughs> yeah, put put your funny glasses on, and I'll show you a green dog. <laughs> okay, so that's oh. the greyhound, and I I just wanted to get the color in. Yeah, this guy, I'm kind of curious. I'm picturing. Are you still going back to the color? Oh, I'm just picturing what they look like. I, I'm trying to think because the whippet I saw, I think, was like white or like lighter colored. Oh but, yeah. Uh, anyway, I was just trying to picture any color. They're saying it, any color. Okay, so that's the Italian greyhound, and now we're going to talk. What if that greyhound or any other dog that you're talking about, uh, your family, everyone out there, think of your dog. Does it bark? Does it bark too much? Does it drive you nuts when someone comes to the door and it just won't stop? <clears throat> or it goes outside and that neighbor dog is out there and it just barks and barks and barks and barks at your neighbor's dog and uh, or a squirrel or whatever else is. What if that dog just won't stop barking, Ron? So the first thing is to find out why is the dog barking because, you know, that's that's usually where the solution lies. Um, is it barking uh, at you and wanting your attention? Is it barking out in the yard like what we talked about? And it's look and somebody's walking by maybe with a dog kind of a thing. Uh, all sorts of things. Is the door opening? And that's the, the barking. Um, some of these are natural barks. This is what dogs do, and this is their, you know, their their way of handling the situation. Some of it is uh, we trained them, and so mm-hmm. look at it from those different perspectives to, to determine why is my dog barking to just see if there's a quick and easy solution. For instance, that door opening. Obviously, it's a person, and they're coming into my area. This is my herd, and you know, you're kind of doing mm-hmm. it. But at a young age, we encouraged usually that barking by uh, when the door opened. We had a little woof, 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 and you go, "Oh, isn't that so cute?" And you picked up the dog and you gave him a scratch, and the dog went, "Oh, they like that, do they? They like when I go woof, 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 woof." Well, that little dog turns into a bigger dog and and a stronger vocal cord and then it becomes bark bark and now you're like just stop it right you know know, as you're going towards the door um so try to stop it on the front end so you could uh when it's woof woof you know either ignore that behavior you can try that that's always a good step one in everything ignore the bark see if the dog will stop barking um with susie and callie and callie responded to this our little dachshund a lot better than our little trouble child susie (laughs) um i picked up callie and i opened the door and i said hold could you hold on for a second and the kennel was only about 15 feet away and callie actually got had to go into the kennel we're talking like 30 seconds to five minutes, you know, so I can take care of whatever this was. And then I let her out. Well, Callie is like, dang it. Whenever I bark, I go in the kennel. Wait, I'm going to put two and two together. I'm not going to bark. If I don't bark, I don't go in the kennel. I'd rather not be in the kennel, Mm -hmm. even though it was a very short period of time. So use it as kind of a timeout aspect, uh, for uh, cat owners. If you do, does your cat meow in the morning to wake you up so that you fill the bowl up? What I do with my cat is uh, when they meow the first time, I pick up my cat, put my cat into the laundry room. <sighs> that is where the water and the litter box is. I close the door with the lights off. 
So now my cat thinks, oh, when I meow in the morning specifically, um, I get put in there. I, I was meowing to get the, the food going, but obviously that's not the right behavior because I keep on getting stuck into the laundry right, room right. until it is time to eat kind of a thing. So you look for those kind of aspects where you give them an alternative that they that they don't really want and then they go well i'm not going to bark anymore and realize with every training issue it's consistency so do it every single time and then it's frequency frequency is so important because we don't speak bark and they don't speak english and so we have this communication issue that we got to get through it'd be a whole lot easier if we could just talk to the dog yeah if we could yeah Ruff. Stop it. Stop barking. That's what I want you to do is stop right, right, right now. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, <for me>. Roinks. <laughs> and so the frequency Rokey, is Rokey. so important because I mean the first 20 to 40 times, literally, you do this, most dogs don't get it. They don't even understand why they're why you're doing it. But after that, they start seeing a pattern. And now they go, Oh, on that 50th time. Whenever I bark, he picks me up and he walks in the direction of the kennel. I wonder if I'm going to go in the kennel now. Mm. Oh, you know, and then the 60th time, the light I bulb. do go in the yeah. kennel. You know, and so you're looking for that light bulb to come off. The consistency is if you don't, if you're not consistent in your training, they're going to go, I wonder if I can get get away yeah, with it get away with right, it this right. time. just like I, kids i think i can that's something i've noticed uh with parent and we always like to cross over because i think a lot of people can get this i know a lot of people out there are parents and a lot of people can see the relationship the, the parallels that we talk about with with dogs and in training and the kids that's so true like every once in a while like if jack does something and he'll get a timeout um he's what we do is we put him in the corner and he has to wait uh five minutes you know in the corner and if he tries to get out we add a minute you know so that's like our that's our policy yeah. right and every once in a while we have to get going somewhere and he just did something bad so we don't give him the time out and then you could he, he i could tell in his mind he's thinking i just got away with that so now i'm gonna try and do it again well, next time I'm i don't want to go in time out you know? i'm gonna wait until we have to go someplace and, and then i'm gonna be the naughty exactly and so how many of us parents know that trend gosh it's right before we go they always get out of control because they know they can get rid and away with in your test and they're testing you always testing is what i've learned as being a parent he's always I'm, i can almost see the little cranks in his brain sometimes <laughs> thinking i can get away with this can i so it's challenging but that's always the of course I that's a challenge see. of parenting it's consistency and repetition and that's the same parallel here we're same talking about right. with, with dogs is that they the time that you don't pick it up and go to the kennel with it because you have to get off to work he got away with it mm -hmm. he's thinking oh i don't have to oh well, another parallel is people will say oh i don't want to use the kennel as a bad thing well nobody's like yelling and screaming or hitting or anything like that the kennel's not a bad thing when you're just using it as a timeout nor is the bedroom or the crib a bad thing for the child we use it as a tool to help us train or work or actually make things safe a mm -hmm. lot of times. Um, so uh, you can draw that parallel if you think that this is using the kennel as a bad thing and you're going to discourage the dog from wanting to use the kennel. Just think of it as, okay, well, did the child not want to go into their room as a result of taking a timeout? No, no, still said this is the place to go kind of a thing. And so I know for both my dogs, we use this uh, from time to time as a training tool. And both our dogs use the kennel as their timeout for themselves. So if kids are going crazy and they're like, ah, I got to get away. This is weird. Mm -hmm. They run into the kennel and that's their safe zone. We don't go and grab them out of the kennel. So kind of you thing. talked about when someone comes to the door and, 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 you know, that's when they start barking or, you know, when they're barking at the house, take me to the one, the scenario I put out there is that the neighbor, you have the fence and for whatever reason, your dog just loves to bark at that other dog across the fence. Mm -hmm. And I mean, one solution would be obvious is that wait tell there's not the other dog out there but that's not always possible right. so how so, would you stop it from barking at so another the, dog yeah so the easy one is is remove the temptation to bark in that case so wait for when the dog isn't out there and right. then when it isn't then now you can go out there let your dog out that is by far the easiest and if you just think through that you probably have more opportunity than you realize for that and your neighbors probably have a pattern like you do too they get home at five o'clock they always let the dog right out at five you know and maybe yeah. yours is a short 
get the potty issue out and then come back in right. and then go back out. So that's after. a simple solution, but so now, that, you know, some people that leave their dogs out like all day, so that might not be possible. Right. Some. Okay. So now it's desensitizing your dog to that situation. So maybe it's an alert bark. There's a dog over there. There's a dog over there and he's going to come over here and eat us, you know, kind of a thing. <laughs> and so you, again, we don't know what they're thinking. Nobody's ever sp sp spoken bark. You think and anyone so, ever will? You think they'll ever figure that I, out? I, hey, when I'm in heaven, that was that's going to be one of my first questions. I just want to know a couple of things. What does that bark mean? You know, what were they trying to say there? <laughs> um, so uh, desensitizing your dog is the next thing. And the way to desensitize in this situation is the location of your dog versus the, the dog that it sees and it's barking at. Have you ever noticed that your dog doesn't bark when you're at a distance? And then as you get closer and closer, your dog starts to bark or starts to get even restless and then starts to bark. So you want to rem bring your dog maybe to the other side of the yard. Maybe you know, is, he's on a leash now so you can control the location and you're praising your dog when he's not barking or she's not barking. As you get closer and closer, the wiggle and the anxious thing starts happening continue to praise your dog uh, so that as you're getting closer no bark is a good thing you know maybe even a treat or something like that and then really get them comfortable in this zone and it might take weeks it might take hours you know all this kind of stuff is time related and your mm. dog is uh, is uh, unique we don't know how how quick or how long or uh, it's going to take, and, I, and we don't know how long has this pattern been going, so how strong is the pattern kind of a thing. So who knows on this one? Patience is, is a virtue at this point. So you get closer and closer. Keep on giving them those good face, you know, jaw rubs. Here, th top three ways to encourage your dog. One, by far, is the treat, number one. Second is scratching around the jaw area, so tactile. And then third is a comforting, good dog, good dog. They, when they know that that means positive just because you've been doing it in the house and all that kind of stuff, a verbal uh, kind of a good dog or whatever your words are uh, in a calming way uh, is the third way to do it. I go, go for trifecta and do all three and you got the biggest bang for your buck. So, so now let's say you get to the point where, but then my dog started barking when I went five feet forward. You then just bring them back five feet back or maybe 10 feet or 15 feet back, get them to stop barking and go through that repetition again. So you're desensitizing your dog at this point to this. And you're going to have to re uh, redo this from time to time because he's going to just go rough, 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 and you're going to go have to go back out there. So patience and diligence is, is uh, the key to all of this. And I understand not all of us have this. So that's why there's additional tools to use out there. So we're really focusing on Identify the, the pattern, the issue, see if you can remove it. Second, desensitize your dog to all this. So, you know, give them encouraging behavior when they're not doing it um, and then bring them away when they just start to get, you know, the rough out, uh, the bark, bark out. And then the, the next way to do it is, have you ever watched a dog, um, two dogs playing? What Do you notice that, you know, they're playing and they're wrestling each other? You know, that kind of rough play? Our, the two dogs, I think I, it was two weeks ago, I talked about our neighbors and everything. Mm -hmm. We were, when Emily, my daughter and I were out in our front yard, and we do have wolves in our area. Oh, really? And they walk around almost like, I see you and I don't care. You know, they're, they're but they'll never come close to you. And if you approach them, they run away. So they are... Coyotes or wolves? Um, we actually think there's a combo Okay. Uh, I forget what they call it, but we watched a, a, a documentary on it and they are in our area. We don't know because they have characteristics of both a coyote and a wolf. Interesting. Bigger than a coyote, smaller than a wolf, hmm. and it has features of both. So it's interesting. I had a neighbor down the road that raised wolves. He had a permit to have wolves. Yeah, and say, at night at nighttime, uh, you would hear them <gasps> howling. Yeah, it's pretty cool, actually. It's a little bit, so it was a little bit creepy, up. but it, but there they was a neighbor neighbor but farther away oh, okay you could, but you could at night you could hear them howling at the moon we, i've never heard these guys howl yeah. so i don't know if that says more about what they are so uh we were in our front yard and we heard the two dogs just going at it back there 
like we said, oh, the wolf must be back there because it's all, rawr, rawr, you know, yeah. that kind of stuff. And then our neighbor pops around the front of the yard like normal. And we're like, what the heck is going on back there? Just oh, playing. our two dogs are just playing back there. I'm like, it's echoing through the neighborhood as if somebody's dying. And he goes, oh, no, they're just playing. Well, that's normal dog play, you know, kind of a thing. Yeah. Sometimes it gets, in our interpretation, rough. Sometimes they take it too far and, yes. and break the skin. If you, you know. see blood, that's beyond the playtime. So what dogs are doing is, is they're playing back and forth. What happens if one dog gets on the other dog's nerve or it gets a little too far? It turns around and it nips the other dog in the neck saying, I don't like what you just did. That's their way of communicating. Mm -hmm. And so they, and then you sometimes hear a little, mm -hmm. and all that kind of, stuff. Hey, well, we could do this for our own dogs. So when they bark, Hey, you're doing a little, you went a little too far, just like two dogs barking. I need to give you a little nip. What if you had that tool and you didn't actually bite your dog? Yeah. That, you didn't have to you, bite your That's dog. where you're talking about the collars, right? That's right. where the collars come in. These guys, these things were invented and, and tested by veterinarians because they saw that same characteristic. Um, if you've ever tried it on yourself, it is very much like a little bite like that. Um, the, the most I ever noticed when I was, I would, I put it on my neck, I put it on my forearms just to see what it would be on all levels. The biggest thing I noticed was it contracted my muscle. And that was a little different. Mm -hmm. I w it was an unanticipated thing and all that. And I actually, uh, Susie, our troubled child, needs a collar from time to time. And I do notice her neck, she turns her head whenever we hit the button. And it's because that muscle is contracting. Right. Um, we always do the disclaimer with these, too, because I know there are some people that are sensitive to these uh, devices and they not, aren't in favor of them. So just remember yeah, that it's I, not for everybody. If it if it is the difference of staying at your house because you're going to get evicted from a barking dog. Or you have to give your dog up. Give your dog up. Hey, this uh, is a much better a scenario. Yeah, and not everyone has the time for the training we were just talking about. And that does take a lot of consistency and repetition. And you might not have the time for that. So this is an option that, again, I don't see it as being cruel but i know some people think that you're uh really doing something that you shouldn't be by zapping the dog i think know? if you if you understand the concept of why they were doing it, it was through observation and then they tried to figure out a way how can we simulate that bite and if you go through that you go oh i kind of get it and and all that um, but if hey if this is not your gig we just spent most of this program talking about how to handle that barking be patient and that's the way it is right. go through the the remove the source or go through a desensitized uh, uh, scenario so that you can get your dog used to that area. Mm -hmm. So that barking collar then is the, the final way. Um, some people have to do it on a temporary basis because of eviction type issues or neighbor type issues uh, or the city, you know, doing something, you know, kind of a thing. And I don't want to give up my dog. Uh, I want to, I want it, you know, part of my family still. Mm -hmm. So realize it is also a temporary thing uh, because the dog is being conditioned at that point that, oh, you don't want me to bark, that bite thing occurs, I don't like that, okay, I'll stop barking. Don't give away your collar, I always say, don't, you know, because somebody's going to go, I want to try that on my dog. You won't ever see it again. I've done that <laughs> probably like three or four times. You'll never see that collar again. Uh, or when it comes back, the battery will be missing and a prong will be gone or something like that. And you'll go, Oh, now I got to go buy another one. Um, you will use it from time to time, less and less as you go forward in the future. Time. How much are they? They uh, vary in pricing because uh, there's also there's ultrasonic ones. There's those air blast ones and all that kind of stuff. So you can get them for uh, the cheaper ones that probably are not going to do a good a job uh, in that $30 range. Um, the good ones that do a nice job are in that fifty to seventy, eighty dollar range, okay. um, and then the more advanced ones that are really, you know, hey, this thing's going to last. It's going to do what it does uh, really well, type thing. Um, those are, uh, you know, over a hundred. Okay. And one other one, I, I'm not sure if this is on your list of things to get to, so let me know uh, if it is. But my father-in-law and mother-in-law have a dog that likes to bark a lot and they have the button that makes like a noise. Do you, were you going to talk yep. about that? Um, I have 
so at home we also have we have the automatic one so you d- determining whether you get the automatic one or the one that's manual like what you just described um, if your dog is barking when you are not there and you need that to stop that's the automatic bark and it lets out a noise that you can't hear right it, it's it's almost oh in, in I, audible see, I actually no? I was I was mistaken on what you're saying okay. um, so let's let's put that third that one in there as the third option okay. uh, so you've got the automatic barker that falls into automatic as well what you just described is the ultrasonic so again um, here our family tries out what we have in petland all the time mm-hmm. i have the ultrasonic barker in the store as well they just came out with one that you can actually hang on the door so if it's the you know barking as it comes to the door i said that's genius yeah that makes so what sense. happens is it's it's sound activated so as the dog approaches gives the bark bark it then lets out a ultrasonic or a what do you call it a a sound that we can't hear it's but a different they can. frequency yeah, yeah. We, it's above yeah. what we can hear and it's irritating they to don't them. like it yeah they don't like it and our dogs again respond very well to that i use an ultrasonic uh, uh bark control in the morning because susie she goes in waves and we're right in the middle of a wave right now when she does it she'll either bark like incessantly in the morning because I heard something outside and I got to let you guys know. Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, it's time to eat. <laughs> and I'm, you know, kind of doing that on the side as well. Um, so I, I just get up, I give her a no, I look at her and I go, Susie, no. And then I turn the ultrasonic Barker control thing on. Callie is sitting right next to her and you can almost see Callie go, Oh gosh, Susie, would you just stop it? I thought we were going to eat and you had to go and do that. Yeah. You know? And so Susie, she actually puts her head down when we do it. Cause she's like, Oh, Drast did. I did it again. And so we're training her to do that. If it was really intense, I would just turn that on as I put her to sleep. So she sees you turn it on. Yeah. She knows that it's if she barks, she's going to get the, the sound. Yes. Right? So she doesn't bark after that. She doesn't that. like it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's a really effective thing. They do have one that's supposed to be for your neighbor. You know, you put it in your yard. I just don't find that the sound is strong enough for the neighbor's dog to do anything, but okay. you can try it. The dog would have to come right up to the unit within about 10 feet okay. in order for it to really have any effect. So if you've got that scenario with your neighbor's dog, that would that's be That's the one I'm aware of. Is there a noise is different that you can hear? Is that Was that what you were saying? Because you said there was three options. Oh, the manual option. Oh, okay. And that is is a, having a manual. You can get these in ultrasonic. You can get them uh, in uh, the more of the static, uh, like where it's simulating a bite on the bark, okay. uh, on the neck. Um, those, those, I love those because if the barking is occurring while you're there, get a manual one because now you're going to uh, reinforce the non-barking while your dog is, you know, while you're there and all that kind of stuff. But does your dog go into the planter and dig out your plants? You then use it then. Does your dog attack your other dog a little too much and it's uncomfortable? Now you can use that for that. Because um, uh, Callie, our dachshund, will not defend herself. Never. She just doesn't defend herself. <laughs> so Susie, who's half her size, will come up and used to bite her ears incessantly to the point where they, over time, they started bleeding because it was just this chew that was always occurring. It wasn't a one-time chew. Yeah, it was yeah. an irritant chew. Yeah. And so we, I hit the button on that one and said, Susie, stop it. Okay. So that, there's a lot of different scenarios out there. Come on into Petland. We'll talk through what's good for you in your scenario. And then uh, the last topic we're going to talk about today is chicken soup for the soul pet food. And a lot of people know that brand. It certainly took off. I think it was the 90s when that uh, book came out. Uh, really took the, I think it was like a bestseller. And people are, I think a lot of people listening are very familiar with that brand name, chicken soup for the soul. They decided to come up with the dog food, and uh, you're going to tell us about that, right? And so, so the chicken soup for the soul is is based on the book, as far as that goes. Um, it's that familiar name, and so they're marketing, you know, some different things that we, you know, they know people love and dog food, and we'll have cat food in the future as well. Um, but for the dog food, just on the front end, we're gonna I talked about a little bit on the front end, I think. Um, We're going to have a signing in our store in the near future. So if you are a contributor, Chicken Soup for the Souls, for those people that don't know it, it's a book where they're short stories and they're kind of those inspirationally type stories Mm. or hardship and then, you know, things worked out kind of a thing. So they're really nice stories to read. They're short and all that. 
we have contributors right here in Iowa City, and we're going to have a book signing. We're just encouraging all those that uh, have contributed to contact Chicken Soup for the Soul as well as our store, and we'll get we'll coordinate that here in the future, and we'll have a signing right at the store. So that's a cool thing coming up. Chicken Soup for the Soul for the dog food, they designed, and this is not new food, it just was not marketed very well for years. And so they've amped that all up. It is one of those high quality foods that are out there for your dog. This is one of those where if you're feeding a uh, dog food from the supermarket or from the local mart stores or the grocery stores or whatever, um, those are little, those are lower quality foods. Uh, when you switch to something like chicken soup for the soul and a lot of other dog foods that we have in our store at Petland, you're going to feed half as much. And so when you come in and you go, why is the dog food more expensive here? Because you, it's all nutrients dense and it's stuff that your dog can, can actually digest. And so just looking at the ingredient list for chicken soup for the, the soul, first item is chicken. Second item is turkey. Then it's chicken meal. Then it's turkey meal. So I just rattled off four protein sources there and talk about uh, why did it say chicken and then say chicken meal? Both of those are outstandingly great. Chicken, uh, if it just says chicken, it's like when you go and it says quarter pounder at McDonald's, that's pre-cooked weight. And so that's your top ingredient. And they're just putting it on there because their regulations does say if you're going to show a chicken on the front of your bag, you got to have chicken um, in there. They went way beyond that and made it the first item on their list, which means it's the high, it's the most quantity within their their uh, food. They beefed it up because then I also said chicken meal a little later, later on and then turkey and then turkey meal. When you see meal after chicken or turkey or beef or anything that's good don't think bad things because the internet gets really confusing on this thing meal means after cooked weight and so that means it's the same part uh, when it says chicken it means the muscle or the skin um, chicken meal means the muscle or the skin after it's cooked so if something like that is really high on the ingredients list it means like there's a really a lot of it in there and so that's a good thing after that cracked pearl barley whole grain brown rice all things peas oatmeal things that your dog can digest really well so they're gaining getting really good nutrients for that um, i went to dog food advisor which i find is a fairly good pretty much a non-biased way of looking at dog food this is four out of five uh, that is incredibly high for the dog food advisor uh, to, to rate any food. And usually why they mark it down a little bit is because of more of an unknown, you know, we're still learning about what dogs should eat and shouldn't eat and all that kind of stuff. And they're just saying, hey, this ingredient or that ingredient, although it be minor, uh, we're still not sure, you know, how we want to go about that. And so they rate it down one. Four out of five, that's an incredibly high uh, uh, rating for dog food. So Nice. So like chicken it. soup for the soul, you got to try it out. When you come into our store, you're going to see it head on. Uh, Koi, our inventory manager, uh, made a new uh, section in our uh, in our store. And you're going to, when you come in, you're going to see exactly what I mean. You're almost going to run into this display and you're going to go, what is this? And it's going to be all the information about chicken soup for the soul. So you can learn more about this food and all of it is right there for you to cool. grab. All right. And listen up for that book sign. We'll be sure to have that on the air when it's uh, a reality. That's Ron Salzer with Petland of Iowa City. We are done. It's a wrap. And we thank you for tuning in. Don't forget those $5 nail trims. You've got all the great supplies, thousands of supplies, treats, leashes, collars, small pets. You've got uh, everything from rodents to fish and, of course, all those cute little puppies throughout the store. AM 800 KXIC, Ron, thanks. Thank you very much. We'll be back next week, same time, same place. AM 800 KXIC, 9 a.m. on Sundays in this 9 o'clock hour or on our podcast page anytime that you have the time to listen kxic.com click podcasts bye